Here's part two of simplifying radicals. I have four examples this time. So the first one, I have a square root of 81, x to the fourth, y to the tenth, z to the twelfth. My index is two. Everybody underneath the radical is multiplying or dividing. I don't have any extra pluses or minuses in there. So I'm just going to go factor by factor and take the square root. With numbers, you just have to think what times what equals 81. And so that one is a nine. When we have a variable factor, such as this x to the fourth, the way I figure out how it simplifies is I take that index and I divide it into the exponent. So it will be x to the four over two. I'll go ahead and write that once and then you'll see what happens. Same thing on that next one, y to the ten over two, z to the twelve over two. And then if you tidy those exponents, we'll get 9x squared, y to the fifth, z to the sixth. And that's how that simplifies. I wanted to give you an example with a fraction. So this time I have the square root of 49 one hundredths. With fractions, if you want, you can break that up into two different radicals, one for the top and one for the bottom, and then just simplify each piece. So the square root of 79 is 7, and the square root of 100 is 10. By the way, on your calculator, you probably have a button that looks something like this. It might have a Y or an X underneath. And then when you press it, you may or may not get a parenthesis that starts what goes underneath the radical, what starts the radicand, in which case, find the parentheses on your keyboard and be sure to close those off before you enter. So two more examples down here at the bottom. I'll go ahead and circle that answer up at the top, 7 tenths. I have the cube root of negative 1 eighth. So I've said before that you can take odd, three, odd roots of negative numbers. So in this case, I need to think of something that if I multiply it three times by itself, I will get to negative 1 eighth. Keeping in mind what I had just said about that 49 one hundredths, let's go ahead and break this up into a top radical and a bottom radical. So now in the top, I'm looking at what times what times what equals negative one. So if you remember your rules about multiplying and dividing negative numbers, if you multiply negative one times negative one times negative one, you do in fact get negative one. And then the cubed root of eight, I need something times something times something to get eight, and so that's gonna be a two. So let's go ahead and put that radical. So the cubed root of negative one times negative one times negative one. Cubed root of eight. Negative one half. Okay, last example. This time I'm doing a cubed root of a variable expression. Everybody's multiplying or dividing. So again, to get my result, what I do is I divide the index, the one out front, into the power underneath. And it needs to come out evenly. So a to the 3 over 3, a to the 6 over 3, I'm sorry, b to the 6 over 3, b squared, and c to the 9 over 3, c cubed.